Hello everyone, welcome to another video. It is Francesco here. I hope everyone's having a good day so far. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is speaking with the productivity expert himself, Mike Vardy. I'm actually really excited today to be talking to Mike because it's probably something we've been trying. Well, I, I mailed Mike like two years ago um, and we didn't quite find a time because we're on different time zones, uh, but it, it's very suitable now to be uh, bringing Mike in. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how Mike uses uh, the concept of day theming. We're going to go into a bit more detail on that. Uh, and then we're going to do a separate video as well. So that'll be available in a separate video about how Mike uses Todoist. For those who don't know Mike, Mike is the uh, creator of Productivityist, a leading blog in the productivity space talking and diving into really important topics, advice, uh, apps, resources that you can use. And he creates a lot of resources himself, which is quite uh, awesome. He also has a Skillshare who he partnered with to do is to do, and that's a really popular one, actually, uh, a very effective one. It's uh, free and I'll include it in the description below. Um, but Mike, uh, maybe you can add a few more things to that list uh, of, well, the amount that you do is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. How much time do we have now? Uh, <laughs> so, um, no, I mean, Productivity is my company, and we're actually in the middle of a, a rebrand um, because uh, one of the things we're shifting towards is to we're shifting more towards the philosophy and the methodology that I teach, which is called time crafting, which was once known as the now year method. I'm yeah. kind of trying to get away with all uh, from all these tongue twisters. I think that's because <laughs> they're not productive at all. They're not. <laughs> They, they just take so time to write, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So uh, time crafting is what I teach. And um, basically, th when we talk about theming and mode-based work and all those things, that kind of lends itself into that 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 approach. But I mean, I've done stuff with Creative Live. I've, you know, I've got the podcast, the Productivity is Podcast, which has had, as of this recording, uh, about 2.3 million uh, downloads uh, in about 179 episodes. So uh, we've done pretty well with that. And, you know, I mean, I, I coach, so we have coaching practices. We have a, a, the productivity is playbook, which is kind of like our intro to a lot of this stuff. And then the now year action plan course, which it, the, the idea behind there is to use elements of time crafting to, to plan the year you want anytime you want, whether you started on January 1st, spring solstice, tax season, school <laughs> starting, it doesn't matter. I think you can have the year you want anytime you want. So that's the kind of stuff I, I talk about. And uh, write about, and I love it. And thanks for having me, Francesco. It's been a while. We actually tried to get together when I was in London, but yeah. it just didn't, it didn't no, mesh. We, we, just, we didn't clash. No, that, yeah. that's, that's a yeah, lovely thing. But um, I think we'll meet in person one day, which will be great. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and what I'll do as well, uh, for everyone who's watching, I'll make sure to include all of the lovely stuff that Mike works on in the description below so you can find all of that good stuff. Uh, and also where to find you specifically too, like on social media and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, so we'll chat today a sort of little introductory topic, day theming. Uh, this is something I know that you are uh, pretty much an expert in and uh, have been able to use it in sort of your daily routine, but also in all of the situations that you've come across. So uh, for someone that doesn't know what day theming is, maybe you could give a, a basic introduction to it. Sure. So the idea of theming your day or daily theming or day theming is is that you give your day an overarching focus or an emphasis on the particular you know, category or aspects of your work or life that you're going to focus on during that day. So for example, today as we're recording this, uh, today is my audio and video day. So it's a Wednesday, Wednesday's audio video day. So my overarching focus for that day is to work on the podcast, whether it's straight up recording interviews, and actually today I don't have any, but it'll be like doing intros and outros, uh, right, you know, um, modifying some show notes, let's say, or uh, actually one of the things my assistant's working on is, is she's got some new ideas for show art, things like that. Anything related to audio and video. Actually, I'm going to be recording a video later today about how to use my now year calendar. So things like that, they all fall into Wednesday. And the way, the reason day theming works so well is because when you get out of a meeting, let's say, and, and this is why people, people say, oh, I can't do it. It's possible. My day is so, you know, it's so, uh, uh, fluid and, and I don't have a uh, don't have anything set. So you know, you and I are having this discussion right now. When I get out of this discussion, I'm not going to ask myself, well, what do I do now? 
which is such an open-ended question. And we get stuck yeah. with the paradox of choice when, when that kind of thing happens. Because, And you'll see this in my Todoist. If you looked at my Todoist, and I know yours is the same, it's like, well, what, what could you, it it's just be, looks overwhelming if, you, if mm-hmm. you look at it from that vantage point. But instead, I ask my question, the real quick question, which is, well, what day is it? Oh, it's Wednesday. What does Wednesday mean? How have I defined that day? Oh, Wednesday is audio video day. Okay, well, what are all the audio and video tasks that I could do? So instead of looking at the 368 tasks that might be on my list, now I'm seeing 24 or, or what have you. And then, of course, I've used Todoist uh, to organize, you know, either by priority level uh, or by date uh, or even by modes. So low energy, high energy, things like that, what I can work on. And, and the other great thing about theming by day is, first off, you don't have to do every single day either. I'm not, I'm not regimented about like every day has to have a theme, but when you choose them, it's based on the certainties surrounding your week, right? So Wednesday for me, there's no one home. Like my kids aren't home, my wife isn't home. So it's a good day for me to do audio and video work because not only are they not home now, but very rarely do school holidays fall on a Wednesday. So I'll never lose that day unless I'm traveling or something like that. But the other thing is, is if I don't get all the things done today that are related to audio and video that I set out to do, yeah. instead of me doing the, the thing that most people do, which is just push it to tomorrow, I now have a deliberate you know, waypoint. I have a place, placeholder that's like, okay, I can't do, I'm not doing these today. So can, I, can they wait until next Wednesday as opposed to can they wait until tomorrow? And in some instances, no, they can't. So that's fine. They carry over to the next day or maybe Friday or whatever. But more often than not, those tasks migrate to the following themed day, which would be next Wednesday. So that's kind of how it works. And, and I use daily theming in conjunction with horizontal theming, which is kind of like, you know, theming by the hour which again, you use a category. So for example, uh, I have a reading uh, hour that I do in the morning and then I have writing time from 9.55 p.m. to 11.55 p.m. That overrides audio video day. So for example, once 9.55 tonight hits, I go into writing mode. I may end up writing podcast stuff, but I have that freedom to do it. So it's about giving yourself something to focus on rather than getting stuck in a sequential list or thinking about working by project, which is one of the worst ways to stay in flow. Um, It's better to have like these kind of categories or these modalities to work by. So that's kind of how, how I use it. And I've been leveraging it for gosh, for years now and it's worked really, really effectively. I love the concept. I think I do something much lighter than that. <laughs> mm-hmm. but I think it's a really effective uh, way to like, complete your task list. And so maybe you can give us a sort of window into your average, the average uh, theming of the week. Maybe you could tell us a bit more about that, that week. Sure. So I start my work week on a Sunday. That's, I mean, that's the way the calendar looks. It's the way that I, I like to start my week. I've done that again for uh, the better part of the last seven years, I'd say. And, uh, you know, so Sunday is my planning day. And the reason I choose that as my planning day is because uh, no one, I'm not getting emails from anybody, mm. you know, no, there's very little interruptions. And if there are interruptions or disruptions, it's normally with my family and I can afford to be interrupted during a planning session more than during, say, an audio video session or even during, uh, uh, during a, you know, a, a training session, let's say. Yeah. And it's the start of the week, so it makes the most sense. So some, Sunday is my planning day. Monday is my optimization day. So it's the day where I optimize things. So I'm, I'm in, to, in the weeds of Todoist. I, I also use Asana a lot for team-based stuff because it's, it scales really well for team stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing things like looking at anything that will optimize my, my life. So that would be things like, how do I make sumo.com work better for my website? How do I improve my Facebook funnels? Like things, things that will optimize and make things better. But for personal stuff, be like, okay, meal planning. You know, uh, things like that, you know, do I need to, uh, reading, like what books am I going to read? Like things like that. So optimization falls into that category. And the reason it does is because Monday, no one is home normally except for my wife. So my wife and I are often talk about like optimizing the home, optimizing the business, but also if it is a holiday and holidays do fall on Mondays from time to time, I can afford to lose an optimization day. Yeah, It used to be my admin day, which is now Tuesday, but I can't afford to lose an admin day. Administrative stuff happens yeah. all the time. Yeah. And the reason I chose Tuesday for administrative is A, I won't lose that day. B, 
Nobody is home, including my wife. She's working that day. But also, uh, most people aren't going to be responding to emails that I would deal with administratively on Mondays. Tuesday, I now have a greater chance of getting responses yeah. because they've already dealt with all the stuff that's coming on a Monday. So Tuesday is my administrative day. Wednesday, as I mentioned, is audio video day. Thursday is my training day. So that's the day where I'm learning or training others. So most of my coaching calls happen on Thursdays. Most of my, you know, I'm, I'm doing a course, like I said, on Facebook ads right now. So even mm -hmm. though that mastermind happened today, actually literally just before I hopped on with you, yeah. I'm going to do the homework tomorrow. I don't, I'm not th sitting here going, when am I going to get to that? I'm like, I know that's happening tomorrow. And I can rewatch the video. So I, you know, I can, I can dive deeper into that on a Thursday. And that's when I'm doing things like learning more about tools, learning more about how I can, you know, use those tools with time crafting, things like that. Friday is my deep work day. Okay. And, and, and Friday, the reason, again, Thursday, I'm not going to lose a day because very rarely are there holidays on a Thursday. Friday is my deep work day. No meetings. No, none of that. No coaching. It's just me. My kids aren't home. My wife isn't home. So I can dive deep into things like writing. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly a lot of writing happens that day. But if I lose that day because of a holiday, so be it. I have that writing horizontal theme happening later in the day and or later in every day. And then Saturday is my family day. So yeah. that's days where we hang out with family, we do household chores, things like that. So uh, one great thing about this, Francesco, is, is that my kids want to go see the new Black Panther movie. Oh, yeah. They never, and, and they do this for every movie. My son especially, who's seven, and he's done this for years. He doesn't say, when can we go see the Black Panther movie? He says, can we go see the Black Panther movie on Saturday? Oh, I love that. <laughs> because he knows. He knows the chances of getting a yes are much greater because he, uh, that's the day we go see those things, right? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're working on a, um, a Star Wars uh, Lego diorama right now. Oh, yeah. Um, wow. And I said, well, we can work on that. I said, we can work on it a little bit during the week, but most of the time we can do it is on Saturday. And he knows this. He's not disappointed. He's not upset. Yeah. It's very clear. And so that's kind of how my daily themes work. And I, I've moved, I've migrated them from time to time. You know, I mean, I, like I said, the Monday used to be admin and Tuesday was, optimization never used to exist. Yeah. Tuesday was coaching day and then Thursday was training day. And mm -hmm. I decided that I needed to have a day where I was making my business better. Um, the ones that have stayed pretty static are, are planning, family, um, audio video has stayed there pretty much the same. And deep work mm -hmm. has been there for quite a while too. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, it, it, uh, then I, what I'll do, and you'll see this, is I'll show you how I, I put those themes into Doist yes. and, along with some filters so that I, instead of me looking at everything, I see very clearly what needs to be done on those days. Yeah, I love that. I, I like the, the fact as well that because you've got that so set, set up well with the family, the communication there is so clear that you can have real quality time with your kids on the Saturday and, and that just makes it a whole lot better. It's, it's something I'm definitely going to bring into uh, family life, so. Yeah, and, and I mean, m Tuesday and Wednesday, my wife works evenings, so Tuesday, my work day ends at 2.30. Yes. So, I mean, I don't wanna do any real deep work on Tuesday or Wednesday because yeah. I have a very truncated schedule during the day that day. So, to have all my podcast interviews wrap up by 2.30 and then know, okay, well, that's taken care of, then yeah. I'm not jumping into anything else. And same thing with Tuesday. I, I basically crank on administrative tasks until 2.30, yeah. And then I go pick up my son from school and then we have time to hang out. So when people have said to me, oh, but shouldn't Sunday be a family day as well? I'm like, well, my yeah. family gets me back on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 2.30 onwards. So they're, yeah. they're gaining a whole day there. And I'd rather have their, them have my, un, you know, my undivided attention during that time period. Like That's yesterday, yeah. which was Tuesday, we took an hour to walk home as my son and I played Pokemon Go. Yeah, that's amazing. Right? And that was he, and he knows that that, that that's available. Yeah, um, yeah. But he also knows that on you know when I'm here Thursday, that when yeah. his mom's home, that until five thirty, I'm working. Like that's yeah. just the way it is. So it, it's it's you know in order to make these kind of things work, um, it's funny. In order to approach something like this, you have to retreat a little bit. You have to step yeah. back. And, okay, well, what you know, what do I know for certain is happening? on a given week. Oh, well, I have a lot of meetings on Wednesdays. Yeah. Make Wednesday meeting day. Like yeah. just say that's the day. It doesn't mean you have to only schedule meetings on Wednesdays, but yeah. that's the day where you have most of the meetings. So maybe that's when you do meeting preparation, meeting yeah. follow-up, 
you read meeting minutes, you know, things like that. And then you go in, then you basically prepared yourself. You've kind of given yourself this elimination of, of, of decision fatigue. And that's such yeah. a huge component oh, when you're 100%. looking at all the things that you, you know, that's why to do is such a great tool because you can put things in there like, you know, write in journal. Yeah. And, and, there's no decision to be made other than am I going to write in my journal or am I not? Instead <laughs> of what, what should I do now? It's very, very clear. And yeah. in a side that moves so quickly yet, it, you know, it, and is trying to balance the idea of quantitative work and qualitative work to have that second brain or, or that, that, that area where you know you can put stuff and it's there for you and you can trust it and it yeah. creates clarity and you've got some awareness surrounding it. That is so brilliant, but you need to be able to have this outside of a tool like Todoist as well, yeah. because what if Todoist goes belly up? Yeah. What if you don't have access to the web? Like yeah. you need to have this stuff drilled in here. So yeah. that way, you know, when you wake up and, or, or when something goes awry, you're not going, well, now what do I do? Todoist isn't working. You and I have seen many task apps go, yeah. go under yeah. and you have to have a framework in place because believe it or not, as odd as this sounds, frameworks foster freedom they don't take it away yeah they actually foster it and that's it yeah 100 percent. the 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 sort of the best trees are the ones that have the best roots right you you, you yep. want the ones that are the strongest so yeah 100 i mean you touched a, a bit there on some of the benefits obviously better communication with uh, people that you work with and also family but what are some of the other benefits that you found from having this framework uh, number one has been just the, 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 the knowledge and the understanding that things are going to happen at specific times because I've laid, laid a map out for that to happen. So it's just created a lot more certainty in a, in a world that can be very uncertain. Um, I think the other thing is that it's very, it's simple. It's not, you know, I mean, I, I don't have to sit back and, and, and go, okay, well, what do I feel like doing right now? What, I mean, I've basically programmed myself mm. without being like, and it's not a heavy duty programming. It's, it's very, it's very, it's, it's, it's simple. It's not like I'm, I'm saying, okay, on this day you have to do this and this and this it's, it's given me enough room for choice, but yet not giving me so much that I can just kind of go off the rails. Yeah. Um, it, but and it's created some consistency. I think that's the big thing too. Yeah. Is, is that when you have consistency, then that you know that breeds that breeds quality, right? That you know you, yeah. you have. And I mean, I don't just use theming for days either. I have a monthly theme. I have a personal and professional monthly theme. You yeah. know, I have the the yearly words that are chosen. Yeah. I have you know mode based work where every task gets a modality. So if I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to write, you know, I'm writing a, a post on. Um, the word ambiguity, I don't want to talk about how ambiguity can be a real problem, then the modality is going to be writing mode, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so it, it just having a, a system like this in place creates certainty in a day that could be filled with chaos because uh, the, and I was just reading an article uh, from the University of Washington, it's a research paper that said that task disruption, the best way to mitigate it is to have a plan to return back to the task. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and what happens when we go from meeting to meeting? Like after I'm meeting with you, I have another meeting. Mm. Um, and then after that, what do I do? Well, my brain would normally say, you better go check email or what's going mm. on on Facebook. No, instead it's like, what day is it? It's when it's audio video. What audio video can I do? Yeah. And then I, I go there. So in, it, it, it puts missions in front of me instead of questions. And I think that there's a lot to be said for that. Definitely. And, and just to be clear as well, today is a Wednesday. So <laughs> just for those who don't know, so it is audio and video day. <laughs> We're doing this on this day. And, I, and, I, and when you Every said, day. when can you do it? That's the first thought that came up. Okay. Yeah. Should this be, and it was, I'll tell you, it was either going to be an audio video day or it was going to be Thursday. It was going to be training day or yeah. audio because it fits that motif. Right. Yeah. And oh, that's the other yeah. thing is that you want those daily themes to be broad enough mm. that you can fit like something could technically qualify for two. Yeah. <laughs> Cause if you make them too narrow, then by the end of the day, you're like, well, I'm done all this stuff. Like you don't want to make a, a daily theme um, for like Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to go social media instead yeah. or networking or communication. Yeah, and then you're going broad. 
but like yeah. you have to, it, it's what we, and you know, it's funny. We were talking about this before we started recording is the idea that we, um, w- when we take on a new tool, we try to do it all at once. We try to like figure out how we can make all of it work. And, and the problem there is that we, we take on too much, then it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. But if we go too narrow, then it becomes underwhelming and, and the yeah. impact it has is going to be, t- you want to find that sweet spot, like the Goldilocks factor, right? You know, it's yeah. just right. And, and it doesn't it, like this theming of your days. It's not like a one and done thing. Like you will have to, you know, you'll have to massage it and tweak it a bit. Oh, but oh, yeah, me, it's far better to do that kind of tweaking and fiddling like yeah. with this that goes with you everywhere you go than with a tool because the tool yeah. can change. Like it can change. We've seen interfaces change. We've seen, and the tool is, you know, may not be as reliable. And I mean, I talk to people all the time, but like the best golfers in the world can use the crappiest clubs <laughs> and still do better than the crappiest golfers with the best clubs because yeah, they need yeah. And that's what we're doing here is you're crafting your time to suit yeah. you to, so you could work subjectively to mm. reach your objective. So you could leverage yeah. those. And it, it, it's an evolution as well for you. So you would have had a completely different version of the, the, the six days in the week or seven days in a week um, one year ago than you would today. So it, it Wednesday used to be daddy duty day. When my son wasn't in school, my son was home with me. So Wednesday was daddy duty day. And then yeah. when he went to school, I, I would get to audio video day used to be Friday before my son went to school. And that would have been three years ago. Uh, and I get to Friday and I'd be exhausted. I'm like, Why am I so tired? I have no, it's because I never worked more than three days in a row on work because my son was home with me on Wednesdays. So yeah. that's when I moved Wednesday, which was my deep work became my deep work day. I swapped them and that made a lot more sense because now I've got the wherewithal and energy to do audio and video on Wednesday. And by Friday, if I'm doing deep work, deep work could be simple as reading. It could be as simple as because the reading can pull things out of me. So yeah, no, I mean, they do evolve. And as your life changes, so should your daily themes and so should your monthly themes and so should your yearly words. I mean, yeah, life is fluid. So, so should the way that you operate. Definitely. And one of the things there is uh, for everyone watching, I'll include all of the blog articles that you know, Mike referred to about the sort of theming for monthly stuff, the ones that you have done so far on it. So I'll pop them in the description. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess for those people taking notes at home um, and it's sort of scribbling down some ideas for that. So what are some ways that people can get started with this? So the, the, the easiest way is to work backwards from the things that are certain. Okay. So I always start with most people like, do you have kids? Yes. <laughs> when are the kids in school? Well, Monday through Friday. Okay. You're certain of that. Yes. And I literally like, like hammer this home. Yes. Okay. When do the kids have school holidays? Well, I go, what are the most common days that they have those? Mark that down. Okay. When are, so your kids are home on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. What about your spouse or your partner? What about that? Like I literally get that because then it's kind of like, do you remember those logic puzzles where it would be like you had um, four types of fruit, like oranges, cherries, watermelons, and, and let's say coconuts. And then you had four people and, and you had to use their clues to figure out who bought what. It was like you put the X in the right. You know um, what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I think I think do, yeah. <laughs> the process of elimination. So yeah. that's what you would do. Is So if your kids are in school five days a week and they're occasionally not home on – they might be home on Mondays and Fridays. Yeah. So then those days are probably not days where you're going to want to do stuff that you need to do every week. That's so it. that that'd be a like, – so again, optimization and deep work fit into those quite nicely, right? Yeah. Um, If your kids are home on Saturday and Sunday, you might want to make Saturday household day and Sunday family day. So Saturday is the day you do chores and Sunday is the day that you hang out with your family. Or maybe uh, you're a religious person, so Sunday becomes family day, but family encompasses church as well, right? Um, And the funny thing is, is a lot of people are doing theming of at least one of those days already. Like they do all their shopping and laundry and stuff on the weekends. Well, what if you put that all on one day? Or what if you... What if you said, okay, uh, Saturday is family and indoor stuff and Sunday is family and outdoor stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could do that. And so that's where I would start is work backwards from your certainties. What days do you look at your calendar? And the other thing is when you do this, look at your calendar at least three weeks out from today. So don't look at next week. 
Don't look at the week after that. And if there's a holiday that falls into one of those weeks in between, move ahead another week. Yeah. Yeah. Because the holiday will always mess things up when you're trying to establish this. Once yeah. you've established it, it's not, it's not a problem. So if, if, the, if you're today is today is the, what today we're recording this on the 17th of 17th, January. Yeah. yeah. So there's likely not going to be a holiday for most people between now and three weeks from now. So yeah. look three weeks out and then look at that schedule because that's where you're going to see the things that are consistent. Oh, I have a regular meeting on this day and I have this. Yeah. And then what's the subject of that meeting? Oh, well, Tuesday it's a sales meeting. Okay, well, that could provide you a clue with should Tuesday be sales and marketing day or maybe Monday should. So that way when you go into the meeting, is the meeting in the morning? Then maybe, you know, so it's about really inspecting yeah. your, your, your calendar, not your tasks. This is tasks tasks migrate to where the themes are. It's about looking at the calendar and seeing the things that are regularly there, things that are certain, and then you can work around those. And again, you don't have to theme every single day. If you, if you get stuck, yeah. then, then, and by the way, every day doesn't have to have a, a, a separate theme either. Yeah. Like yeah. you could have writing day be two days in a row. You could have two meeting days a week. Like it doesn't, it's, it's about personalizing the process. Because hmm. the whole goal with productivity is to take your intention and make sure that you have a way to pay attention to it, yeah. right? So in this case, that's, that's how I would get started. And I mean, it sounds, when I say that, it's like, well, that's a lot. It's not really. <laughs> you're looking at your yeah. calendar and thinking about your life. Yeah. Like, that's really literally what you're doing. And then all it is is just giving, defining your day. Yeah. That's, that's all you're doing. And, and as, as well, to add to that, like you, you, the way you've gone through it, you're going to evolve it anyway in a, um, two months down the line or three months down the line. So, well, you may, or you may not have to. If your categories are wide enough, you may not have to. Like well, administrative is a pretty wide category. Yeah. Like, but, so, I mean, and there's a lot of stuff that fits in there, but there's also the expectation that not every administrative task is going to get done every single week. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, meetings, do you have meetings all the time? Are meetings going away? No, meetings might be a good category. Yeah. Right? Family is the family discipline. That's the other thing is what's going to be around. Like, yeah. I mean, monthly themes are best suited for project stuff. So if you've got a project, that's different. Like this month, I'm learning Japanese, right? Oh, wow. Like that's one of the things I'm trying to learn. And it's, you're right. It's wow is right. It's <laughs> challenging. But, um, and so it's like, all right, well, how do I, how do I like, after that month is done, what am I going to do to foster that? Whereas some people might say, I want to finish this project, which has a definitive end date. Well, then that's fine too. But yeah. your daily themes should be something that, that when you look at them every weekend, week in and week out, you're not going, oh, well, that, that no longer applies. Yeah. You want to make sure that you want to actually limit the amount of change you have on these, uh, but you want to be able to have the flexibility to, to, to move them if they need to based yeah. on the, but you don't want to like every month reevaluate and go, oh, well, these don't, you, you do that when you review anyway. But once you've done this consistently for a while, they generally will stay the same. They won't yeah. move on. I mean, I haven't, the last time I moved mine was in October and I, that's when I swapped training and uh, optimization. Yeah. So it's and not, that was it. Not, so, and I can't yeah. see it happening looking at it anytime soon. They're yeah. working, they're humming along nicely. Yeah. So I can't really. If it works, it works, right? That's just it. If yeah. it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's it. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's, uh, that's day theming from uh, Mike Vardy, which is going to be uh, the introductory feature today. But we're going to be back uh, pretty much probably like one or two days after with how Mike uses to do it. So that's going to be quite an exciting feature. Mike, I really uh, appreciate you having you on today. Um, I'm going to include all of your uh, blog, podcast, the Skillshare class, and everything we talked about in this uh, feature in description below. But um, if you have any other places to find you. Um, if you're interested in kind of diving into this deeply, there's a uh, productivityist.com slash now year, which is the now year action plan course. And then there's productivityist.com slash playbook, which gets you the playbook. And I do plays. So like these little, these little quick tips and tactics that you can apply. And we're releasing those. Um, we've actually got some new plays that we were just adding to the mix. Awesome. So, uh, check those out too. So those are, those are two other options you can go to. Brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming here today. And obviously we'll be back. Well, we're going to be recording in a second, <laughs> 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 but for those guys, it's a separate video. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to check out all that Mike offered uh, in today's video. 
Uh, but for now, make sure to have a great week. Keep productive. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.